than an hour and a half in today's trading session. And I should say trading week here, but volatility is back on the rise. We are back above 40 in the volatility index here. And it's been quite a wild trading week. Um, just a couple of days ago on Monday, um, the S&P had finally turned positive on the year. A lot of bulls were cheering that. But for more on this week's wild market moves, I want to get someone in here to discuss this with us. And that is John Grace, Investors Advantage Core founder and president. And John, I want to get your thoughts on all of the market volatility that we are seeing today and just this week so far. Well, Heidi, I would say buckle up, okay? This is Mr. Toad's wild ride, and we are back in the negative territory for both the Dow and the S&P, and that was after a remarkable, what, plus 44% gain to the upside since March 23rd. You know, a, a visual might be, remember the great cartoon, uh, Wiley E. Coyote and Roadrunner, where they race off to the sunset, and there appear to be midair as they launch off the cliff, and they appear to be midair for a minute or two, and then it's how low can we go? We have been here before. In other words, we can look back at history and see that uh, during the Great Depression, the market had a, a fantastic 50% bounce that held for six months. And then, of course, that was part of a 30-year trend that went down 80%. So I think it's a bear market trap. I'm saying do not trust this. I'm saying you have to put your defensive uh, positions into place because uh, like with the, uh, the cartoon, how low can we go? I think we're going to retest the lows of March 23rd. John, you say uh, investors should get defensive. How should they get defensive here? It's a great question, Heidi. And what I, the first thing that we as an industry have only been doing this since 1979, and we ask these ins uh, insane questions, or asinine questions. Are you conservative, moderate, or aggressive? Nobody knows what that means. I don't know what it means. You don't know what it means. Nope. So why are we using that terminology? The better question to ask is what kind of loss can you accept? Look at it both in terms of percentages and in terms of uh, dollar amounts. Is it 8%? Is it 40%? It has not much to do with age. It has to do a lot more with how much loss is acceptable to you. And then see how the portfolio that you currently have performed in fourth quarter 2018 or even more dramatically in 2008 when the market was off 37%. Was your portfolio off 40% as many portfolios were? If you could compare, go back and compare another portfolio that let's say was only off 20 or less in 2008, you can see the road to recovery is no, no more than 25%. But if, as we get past 50%, man, it gets ungainly. Now we need 100%. And if it gets to be, I was just looking at one situation where these folks were down 60, 60, 66%. That means the gain is 194%. The odds are just not in your favor. So determine how much loss you can you can live with and then see if you can uh, design a portfolio that might perform within your risk of loss parameters. And that way you can stay in the game as opposed to require a Hail Mary pass. John, there's a sense here that the market's finally catching up to reality over the last few days. I mean, as you point out, uh, we've been talking for a while about this diversion that we've seen between what the economic data says about what's actually happening and how the market sees it. But I'm still trying to figure out what that catalyst was. I mean, was it the Fed? Was it what Jay Powell said? I mean, he, he didn't say anything that was entirely surprising, but um, what, what do you think has really prompted the moves over the last few days? I think it, you never know what it was, right? But I would, my theory would be it was a combination of people waking up to reality about here comes the second wave. And by the way, the other second wave that I'm concerned about that we haven't heard much about yet, and that's corporate bankruptcies, okay? So it, that was part of the puzzle. But Powell's made kind of an indicator of what he's thinking, that we see some tough times ahead. Those are not his words. That's my interpretation of what he was what he was saying. And I'm saying, OK, well, here we got. That makes sense to me. Uh, I think he kind of showed his hand a little bit more than normal. And people are actually perceiving correctly what he was saying. We've got uh, coronavirus. We've got uh, massive job losses that many people will not recover. A lot of people have been saving money for the first time ever, as opposed to spending every dime they can with cash or credit. And then we've got this trade war. Remember, just fourth quarter 2018, markets off eight, uh, 20% from September 21 to uh, Christmas Eve, if I recall correctly. Uh, that scared a lot of people. It's still, that pot is still on the back burner and it's simmering. <laughs> you can see it moving forward. So I think we're beginning to be realist to see we've got a lot of clouds on the horizon. It's not happy days are here again. All right, John. So taking into consideration everything that you've laid out for us right now, where are the markets go in terms of direction when we're thinking near, medium, and long-term? 
Well, I mean, you know, if I, I knew that, I probably wouldn't be here. I don't know where I would be, but it would be someplace glamorous, I imagine. So nobody can uh, forecast the future correctly, right? So why try? I think it's futile to forecast. What I say is let's enjoy the melt up, but let's make sure that we see what we can do to avoid as much of the meltdown as possible. What I've learned is savvy investors uh, hate losses more than they love gains. So as I say, let's see what kind of loss you can accept. Maybe you can keep your portfolio to perform within that limit, no matter what the market does, because if it is the case, you might need, for example, uh, by the time you turn 70, $2.6 million. If you're within 10, 20% of that, you can keep your retirement secure for the next 10, 20, 30 years. So we got to keep the, the, the losses limited. We have to diversify. And I submit that active management strategies are in many cases better than just being passive and hoping that the price comes back as you watch it go to, uh, well, yeah, that place there, okay, uh, like the Titanic, as you watch it. No, we want to move out of risk assets of a bad year into cash, for example, uh, so that maybe you did not keep the portfolio 5% cash in 2008. In fact, in 2008, you started at 5%. By the end of the year, you were 100% cash. That kept you whole. And then you got back on, risk on, risk, you know, back in risky assets, 2009, to enjoy the gain. So the losses might have been 20% or less in 08. As long as we got 25% or more net in 2009, we have more money year in 2009, where the passive positions typically took four or five years uh, or longer to get back to even because the losses were so severe. Well, John Grace of Investors Advantage Corp., thank you so much for taking some time and giving us some great market analysis. My pleasure, Heidi. All right. Well, it's been an interesting week for the markets as we've been talking about all show. But on Monday, stocks finally went into positive.